Uh, Commissioner Spiz is uh, on medical excuse. He's on listening, but he will be a presenter on the Gypsy Moth uh, resolution, so everybody knows. Uh, could you call the roll, please? Yes. Uh, Charles. Present. Wafer. Here. Marco. Here. Cavell. Here. Spiz is absent to notice. Miller. Here. Thank you. He's not absent. Uh, pardon me? He's not absent. Oh, so stand for the vote, pledge, please. Though. He can't vote from remotely. Pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. and to the, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we have the approval of the minutes, uh, minutes dated December 1st, 2021. Moved I'll by move Commissioner it. Markham, seconded by Commissioner Wiper. A voice vote, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Now we have approval of the agenda. You know, motion, motion moved by Commissioner Charles, seconded by Commissioner Markham. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, communications? We have no communications at this time. I'm sorry, I, should, I jumped over it. At this time, we'll have public comment. I do apologize for our 10 minutes tardiness on today, but I thank you for your patience. So do we have anybody public comment that signed up? I don't, or you could just go up to the front. You know, if you just wanna sign in and then go up, whoever wants to go first. You have three minutes, let me get the start timer. And whatever, whenever you're ready. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Catherine Kennedy from Lake Orion, and I would uh, welcome Happy New Year, first of all. Happy New Year. Thank you. And I would urge that you approve on the regular agenda the facilities maintenance uh, for the building renovation project for the sheriff so they have an appropriate place to do their work. It's absurd that they have to work in the basement of the jail and they've had flooding. That's actually could even damage evidence, I would think. So I think it's a very logical thing to renovate things that are already in existence to use for better purpose. So I would applaud and encourage that this is move forward and um, no complications to get that promoted for the sheriff's department. I think they absolutely need that. And the fact that it also provides additional storage for other um, divisions could be very useful and might not even might even eliminate the some other areas that are leased separately. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next anybody else for public comment? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Heather Smiley. I'm from Lake Orion. Um, I do voice similar um, you know, my thoughts as far as Oakland County, I think that you guys do a great job of sticking up for the Oakland County Sheriff, so I have no problems. I think that everything will go along fine as far as, you know, their needs and whatnot. You guys are very reasonable. I do also see that we're talking about the gypsy moths. Um, as a naturalist background, I did want to just kind of confirm that we have um, a, a more natural look at it. I know a lot of chemicals and pesticides, but those also kill <coughs> butterflies, other moths, other um, like um, bees, things of that nature that we need for pollination, pollination species. So I didn't see, or maybe I just missed it, which is very possible. It's early in the morning. I don't have my quota um, that we have a, a natural version, you know, something that is not a pesticide that we can use as an option for areas. So as again, we don't eliminate the bumblebees, any other kind of um, pollinating insects and things like that. So that's just my most important thing in regards to that. So I appreciate you guys' time. And again, happy new year. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Good morning. Morning. My name is Sandra Carlian, and I'm from Novi, Gwen's district. I also support the renovation of the Pontiac Health Center for better usage and protection of evidence. I think it's good use of uh, funds. And um, while everyone enjoys receiving grants, loans, and funding, I do want to warn our commissioners that sometimes free money has strings attached. I did find it hard to understand why almost, uh, with almost a year of um, public comments and people coming, physicians, people from OSHA, um, nurses, healthcare workers, 
that, that the concerns about this mask wearing when the evidence does not show that it's effective um, in situations, especially those little blue paper ones from China. Um, and, and I couldn't understand that until I read that, um, that uh, every, six, every six months through September 2023, to get billions in federal government funding, all the school boards must do is prove that they are complying to the set requirements, like masking the children, distancing, contact tracing, et cetera, to receive this funding. So that explains the school board's stance. It's recommended to stop wasting time. Um, we're 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 gonna yeah we're gonna um, we're gonna try to have a look at how much money is coming to our county or the school districts and where this money is going and ask them to take back send back this money or not accept these grants that have these um, unscientific. Um, not science-based re requirements. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Does uh, anybody else want on public comment to <coughs> speak? Anybody want to speak for public comment? Going once, going twice. We'll call public comment closed at this time. Thank you for those who spoke. At this time, communications. We do not have any communications. Now we have the consent agenda which is road improvement fiscal year 2022 appropriation with the Charter Township of West Bloomfield for Tri-Party Road Improvement Program Project number 55041. And then we have road improvement fiscal year 2022 appropriation with the City of Wixom for Tri-Party Road Improvement Program Project number 56561. Moved by Commissioner Wiper. Seconded, General. Seconded by Commissioner Markham. Uh, we need a vote on this, yeah. Can we uh, do the... Uh, what do you call prompt, prompt, the prompt the vote? I was going to say call the vote, but prompt the vote, please. I'm a yes. Wiper? I am yes. <clears throat> you have five yeas and zero nays. Thank you. Motion carries. So now we're at our regular agenda. Our first agenda item is facilities, maintenance, and operation resolution Pontiac Health Center building renovation project. We have a uh, Newly under Sheriff uh, Charles Childs here and uh, Ed jo Joss. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to do a motion. I'm sorry. I'm getting all excited about this thing. Motion by Commissioner Markham, seconded by Commissioner Wiper. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so this um, this item is to renovate uh, what was the old um, Pontiac Health Building. Um, there are some items that we've um, been planning to do through the capital improvement program uh, for, for maintenance for that building, which include um, a, a new roof, um, an overhaul to the HVAC system, uh, a little bit of uh, window work. Um, so that is work that we have, have been planning on doing and need, need to do anyway. Uh, but as part of this project, we're also renovating the space provide an adequate uh, evidence storage for the sheriff's office, uh, as well as providing some additional storage for the entire campus in the lower level. Uh, so um, as we speak here, I'd be happy to answer any questions about uh, construction and timing. Um, as you mentioned, we also have under sheriff uh, Childs on that can uh, speak to, you know, maybe the, the need for the, the new evidence space. Um, joining us also is Aaron Quattel. Um, Aaron is our new environmental sustainability officer. Uh, she's been with us, uh, I think, since the beginning of October. Uh, but um, as you may have seen in the resolution, um, we are implementing some uh, sustainability items, uh, including um, solar panels on the roof to provide um, some portion of the energy. Um, we also have a couple other members of facilities management on uh, Joe Murphy and Steve Foster that can help answer any technical technical questions uh, that you may have. So, so with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Under Sheriff Childs if he if he'd like to speak to this at all. Uh, sure. Um, I actually have with me Lieutenant Jacobs. Also, he uh, oversees. He's the Lieutenant Commander um, in that division that would oversee our property and evidence room. Uh, I believe you. Everyone's seen the videos previously from 
pipes bursting or the rain and the issues that we've had with uh, property and evidence storage in the basement of the jail. And we want to just get away from that, get it to a, a better facility where we can maintain the evidence properly and not have any issues with any pending cases. Um, and then we would end up, you know, potentially using the current area for not essential storage for jail supplies or whatever we could use it for, but we really need to uh, get the property room out of here. We, this has been ongoing for a number of years and we'd like to get it fixed as, as soon as we can get it corrected. All right. Anybody else wanna speak on it? Uh, okay, well, first we'll ask if there's any discussion from the commissioners. Uh, C Commissioner Markham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my question is, when do you think this will be completed? When's this work gonna be done and how long will it take? Go ahead, Steve, if you know yeah, what you Yeah, good morning, everybody. Help, uh, happy new year to everyone. I'd be happy to answer that question. As the project manager for the project, uh, our intent would be to start uh, once approved, proceed. Um, due to the chaotic uh, nature of the construction industry, we'll have to go out for rebid with our general, our construction manager. So that being said, we anticipate that taking about a month, two months, to be able to pull the numbers together and, and align all subcontractors. And so with that in mind, we would expect that we be able to uh, start construction sometime in the spring uh, early spring if possible, and we're slating, uh, thinking that it's going to be about a nine month construction window. So by the end of the year, basically, is your goal? Yeah, okay. that would be our goal. And we'd work hard to accomplish that just so that we don't incur any challenges relative to winter construction. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, and we'll, we'll say uh, through the authority of the chair, of allowing Commissioner Spiz to comment on this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To follow up on Glenn's question, um, you mentioned that uh, you have to go out for a rebid. Do we expect the numbers to change much based on that rebid? I know there's a 20% contingency in here. Will, will that be enough to suffice with any fluctuations in the marketplace that I know we're all seeing in the construction industry? Well, we... We've gone through this a couple of times. So our construction manager has, has really honed in and really understand his documents as well as their subcontractors. So it's a it's kind of more of a bid requalification. We go back to the original couple of bidders and make sure that they're willing to qualify and commit to the original estimate. If not, then we will evaluate that. And for your comment, that is why we put a uh, inflationary um, contingency in the project so that any unforeseen costs due to the nature of the industry will be covered adequately. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a few more questions and focus mostly on the solar panels, but before I ask them, just wanna say, you know, I'm glad to see we're, we're looking at different alternative, alternate energy sources, but with that comes some other questions that I, I will have. One. Since we're redoing the roof, is the roof structurally sound enough to take the 120 panels and go put Yes, it is. And we have, obviously, when we do a project like this and any future projects, that is just a part of the natural process of ensuring that the structural integrity of the roofing structure will handle the load of the solar panels and the layout of the those loads. Good to hear. Um, out of the with the 120 panels that we're putting up, what's the percent consumption that we're gonna use of solar versus, uh, what I call it, the other energy sources? As with all buildings, all commercial buildings, there are energy hogs. So the solar panels anticipate providing 15% of the building required loads. So thus, we're not going to have any form of battery backup system because the building will utilize every um, kilowatt energy of solar energy provided. All right. Do we know what the lifespan is on those solar panels? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? The lifespan on those solar panels, are they, will they be good for 10 years? Do they start to lose effectiveness or efficiency after two years? What Do we know that yet or we're still too early? No, based on current technology, there's always a deficiency in loss over age. The anticipated lifespan is 20, 25 years. 
All right, and I'm assuming we did a, a business case on this. Do, you know, do we know what the payoff is on the $152,000 for this part of the project? So with the idea that the lifespan is 20, 25 years, that is with the intent that you oftentimes will get additional use out of them, meaning they might be degraded to a lower percentage of energy consumption, meaning producing. So they will still be able to be in use. So when you get down to that 25 year mark, you're looking at reevaluating. Does it make sense to find new technology to replace or are they still performing properly? So that being said, based on the current um, ROI, which is an estimated ROI, we're looking at 22 years. Great, thank you. Do we have a plan in place? And, and maybe this is a better question for Aaron. Welcome. First time I get I get the form to meet you. Do we have a plan in place to track? Um, I'm going to call it the efficiency or the usage of um, our solar panels and everything else for going with the renewable energy across the county. I would say not only will we track it, we will have a, um, a provided energy management system that is included with the solar panels. And that will give us a lot of data so that we can also see what our ROI truly is and see if we can maximize how to um, it'll help educate us on how the building operates. So hopefully we can achieve efficiency every year that we move forward. That's good to hear. Is that something that uh, we could potentially have shared with the Board of Commissioners? I think Glenn would want to see the same information. You know, being an engineer, I like data. So I'd like to see that information. Um, I'm not sure what a good cadence would be. Is it every six months? Is it once a year? I don't need to see it every month, but that's probably overkill. But maybe every six months to a year, if we could see that report, that would be good. That's doable. If I, if I can just add to that to reassure you, Commissioner Spiz, um, and Aaron, you're welcome to jump in if you'd like, but uh, we've been working very closely with Aaron, and uh, she is a scientist and extremely data driven on everything that we do. So. There is no doubt that we will not be moving forward with anything without having all of the metrics in place and, and recording and knowing what we're doing so that you know we can we can move forward uh, in the most efficient manner. Great, good to hear. Um, my final question, which might be confusing because it's confusing <laughs> when I asked it the first time. Um, since we're gonna do 100% consumption, or we're gonna use 100% consumption of the solar energy, during the summer, when we have the longer days, and I'm like, I don't know this for sure, so maybe under Sheriff Childs can jump in here too. Are they gonna be working two shifts at this site in the future, one shift, 24 seven? Because my question really is, if 100% consumption, if we don't, if we have downtime with nobody in the office, how will we, how will we have 100% consumption with nobody there? Uh, Lieutenant Jacobs might be able to answer that better. My understanding is mostly day shift. Uh, I do know one of the uh, people assigned there, I believe works 10 hour shifts. So she works a little later into the day, I believe. Um, but it's the, for the property room, it's mostly days for the evidence. Now, when our deputies have to drop property off, that's all time. Of, that's all time of the day, you know, night, whenever, depending on what the case is and what they're bringing up. So from that standpoint, we do use it 24 seven. There may not always be someone in the office though on, on both days and afternoons, but definitely yeah. days. I would like to allow everybody to be comfortable with this decision because we're achieving 15% energy consumption. The building equipment in the building will utilize that energy and take it away right away. So there won't be any wasted solar energy, that's for sure. I just wanted to confirm we needed a solar farm amount. Of I, I heard we didn't, but that makes sense. If the utilities themselves are going to use up that 15%, we should be okay even in the long days of the summer. Okay, thank you. I don't have any more questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, then we have Commissioner Charles. Good morning, everybody. Is this thing on? Um, thank you for the report. I got a couple questions answered based on the other commissioners and of course, Mr. Spiz's few questions there. Um, I wanted to dial in a little bit to uh, two things. First is where it says, whereas the renovation and relocation will be, re will be performed by in-house staff and outside contractors. I'd like a little more insight on there because I don't want to vote to make deputies have to move boxes. And then um, 
I'm, I'm speaking to the board and also to the leadership on the call here that um, it's, it's disheartening as a commissioner when people come to public comment and they say that we're um, uh, holding the, the sheriff's department hostage and making them beg for stuff and making them work in basements with flooding and all that, when truthfully this should have been presented when it first started to happen. Um, so I'm hoping moving forward that we don't have that happen where if you've, I mean, we're one of the wealthiest counties in the country. There's no reason for our sheriff's department, mm -hmm. who is like a major portion of our, our budget, to be working in poor conditions. So, I mean, that just, to me, is a no-brainer, and it's a bad look. And again, I don't like to have that happen here. So uh, question about the who's the pre people when we talk about in-house performing of relocation and renovation. And then just to say, as a commissioner, I'm always welcome to hear from you guys when there's infrastructure that we need to shore up for safety and accountability. That's all. Yeah, sure. So um, in-house staff um, would include some of the um, skilled trades that we have within facilities management that we employ on staff, like um, maybe the, the electricians that we have. Um, it would also include um, you know, folks from our safety division that provide, you know, card readers, cameras, uh, as well as our information technology department. So um, those are the, the in-house staff that um, are referenced. Um, and then to your, you know, your comment about, um, you know, this being a need, yes, yes, we, we totally understand. We hear you loud and clear. Uh, this is a project that we've been working with um, the sheriff's office. Um, for, for quite some time now, uh, unfortunately, it's taken longer that, than we'd like. Um, I can tell you that um, with the, the new administration that um, things like this, I, I find, are, are happening uh, quicker and easier. So uh, we're all hoping that that, that trend continues. Um, you know, the, the issues that we've had over there have been I don't know if they've been going on forever, but but they seem to be more um, more recent. So so that's why we're you know we're asking to to be able to take action on this immediately. All right, any other oh, Commissioner Cavell? Thank you, Chair. I had a question about annual contractors. Could could you? I saw that in the resolution. Could you educate me, Ed, on how that works a little bit or? what that means and what that entails? Yeah, sure. So um, we do have, um, you know, a list of annual contractors for, for everything that we do, every trade, every uh, profession, um, every maintenance need. And in this case, we are utilizing um, an annual architecture firm that produced, you know, the design and the plans for us. Uh, as well as an annual construction manager. Um, now, th there are times when when projects are larger and more complex that we'll will competitively bid those again because these annual contracts are competitively bid. Um, but in this case, um, because the project exceeds the two hundred and fifty thousand dollar threshold, um, although we are working with an annual construction manager, that construction manager is required to follow our purchasing rules. And those rules, um, the, the, the $250,000 rule that I'm referring to um, actually came about um, through a resolution that was adopted by the board. Um, I believe um, Commissioner Miller, uh, I, I know you were very, very involved in that. Um, but um, so, so with this, construction manager, they are required to follow those same rules. So all of the subcontractors that will perform the work on this will be competitively bid. Okay, thank you. And could I ask one more? Yeah, you got the floor. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Aaron, can you just give us 30 seconds of time, uh, since this is like our first official meeting in this conference room, if you will, about this sort of thing, what, I mean, what should we expect out of you now that you're coming here for this sort of stuff? Sure, absolutely. Thank you. A pleasure to be here. Happy New Year. Um, I was hoping to have a little bit more formal presentation, but this kind of came up, so I'm here to present just to answer questions for this program. 
And I think in the future, um, similar type of expectations for me. I provide uh, technical expertise for certain projects, certainly working with Ed and his team on a variety of different facilities and operations programs. You know, we're working with AECOM right now on the campus sustainability plan. And so we're going to be seeing uh, a lot more from, from that team and from me moving forward as far as what that looks like, some of the goals, the vision, the opportunities and recommendations from that program. And uh, really looking forward to working with everyone and progressing sustainability at Oakland County. So I think that that's what you can expect from me in the near future as far as updates and um, interactions. And, and my hope is to have Aaron join in all projects that we bring to the board because um, I'm sure every project we bring will have some um, sustainability element to it. And I thank her for being here because I asked her about 15 minutes before the meeting if she would thank her. She was kind enough to jump on completely unprepared. Yeah, and I think that one of the other things that you can look for, um, you know, to Ed's point too, is we are looking at our policies as well. And so to the point of different projects coming up, you know, you know, routine maintenance as well in that capital improvement planning process of different programs and projects, really just making sure that we're um, presenting projects that are of best and highest use, really integrating those sustainability principles and practices to make sure that we're being very conscious of how we could be the stewards of the environment, if we're responsible and certainly considering the social aspects of all of our community members and constituents. Thank you. Well, this is William Aaron. I have to say you have some big shoes to fill. The last scientist we had here, they had dry ice and uh, <laughs> elephant foam, you know, or whatever they call it. So you got some big shoes to fill. <laughs> um, so I just have a couple questions. I, I appreciate you guys uh, uh, having a meeting with me before this. Uh, it was last week or the week before. Um, to go over it, uh, a couple questions I have is, so with the solar panels, is what's the is there a, what's the warranty on it? I know they're good for 20, 25 years, but as I know in our facilities, is we have like the LED lights, and there's always a warranty with the the, the unit or what have you, right? So is there a warranty with this? Yes, there is a warranty. Uh, I would have to dig back into the information to confirm that. I want to say it's a minimum of 10 years but I'd like to confirm that before I speak uh, any further on it. Thank you. Um, the other one I have is, uh, um, so when Commissioner Spiz brought it up, with, like if nobody's here, I believe with the evidence, um, I, I've represented the, the DIA before, is we have to keep the evidence probably at a certain temperature, I'm sure, right? I mean, it's probably not as like particular, but you have to keep it heated and cooled during the season so it doesn't overheat or over cool, right? I would just assume that would be, and then the moisture, same thing, that's why we're getting out of the basement. Um, so I just, I believe that's one reason why we, what, we'd use the energy when nobody's there, whether it's at night or in the summertime, what have you. Um, the, the last thing is just the Commissioner uh, Charles um, comment about, you know, we always support these the initiatives. I don't remember this ever coming to the board before in the last three years. But I do know like there's been flooding. That's all infrastructure, right? Our buildings are old, so you, you can't say when it happens, right? And then, then to find what's the solution and where to do. Do we build something new? Do we use something existing? So I know this has been a process. So I do appreciate um, everybody coming with uh, the, the solution, right? Because we want to protect that. And with that, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll prompt the vote, please. Like McCain. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you have five days, zero eight. Motion carries. Thank you all. Thank you. Now our next. Thank you. Now our next agenda item is uh, Board of Commissioners other action discussion regarding Oakland County Invasive Moth Program. We do have uh, Commissioner Spiz as a presenter, so he will be speaking on this because this is his. I call it his baby, right? He's him and uh, Commissioner Gersten. So, well, first we need to move it. I move it. Commissioner uh, uh, Wiper, second by Commissioner Cavell. Okay. So the floor is all yours, Commissioner Spiz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think uh, everyone may or may not remember because it took uh, Commissioner Miller and I a few seconds to recall everything after the yeah. holiday break, but we have approved this. It has been to the board and it has been approved. The $250,000 has been allocated and the overall generic plan has been approved by the board. 
to allow up to $30,000 for each community that applies. And I know that um, MSU Extension and a few others have gone out to the communities for training, so that's all taking place. The next steps we need to figure out is how do the communities apply? And do we set up a small subcommittee to review those applications and bring them back to this board for approval um, so that we can get this project moving? We need to get in front front of this, so we need to prepare for the spring, and I don't remember the exact date, and I don't know if anyone from MSU Extension is online with us. Yeah, uh, we, have, yeah we have. Uh, me. Oh, yeah, there he is. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I can't see you off to the side there. Hi. So to give us a little bit of update on, on right. timing that we need to be in front of so that we can be prepared to go, and I believe one of our uh, public comments also had a question relative to the product that's being, going yeah. to be used. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so uh, we're we're hoping to be able to conduct the spray um, in late March, early April. That's the optimum timing to hit the caterpillars at the appropriate stage in their life cycle for it to be most effective. Um, and so everything that we're working on right now is with that goal in mind. Um, I do want to address the, the question Commissioner Spiz had regarding the substance we use to spray and, and also the public comment. Um, the substance that we, our spray programs use for aerial spray is not chemical. It is a, a concentration of a naturally occurring bacteria that occurs naturally in the soil. Um, it does not harm other insects and animals. Uh, there may be you know, other spray programs that use uh, chemicals that are harmful to the wider environment, but that is not what we advocate. All right. Great, thank you. Um, so the next steps, and I believe Connie may have sent you some questions also. From a contract standpoint, we need to, do we need to have a contract with MSU Extension or do we already have one since we do other business with MSU, MSU Extension on this topic? So my recommendation is a separate professional services contract. Um, we do have a current contract for MSU Extension services as a whole, uh, but my recommendation is a separate professional services contract to cover the administrative fee. Um, for this program, we're looking at a, uh, an administrative fee of $35,000 that will provide for us to be able to staff um, all the different measures that we're taking. So uh, we've, uh, as you mentioned, we have already conducted a couple of training sessions for uh, municipal staff. We have another one in the works that I believe is going to take place before the end of this month um, to provide additional training for those who um, will be completing the surveys. Uh, let me see here. We do not, so one of the questions that we got from Connie was around existing contracts with municipalities, Commissioner Spiz, and um, just so to kind of provide some context for that, we wouldn't be actually contracting with individual municipalities. So the way we envision this process happening is uh, we're providing training to the municipalities to be able to survey they'll present us with, with their findings. So we'll work on mapping, we'll work on identifying those communities and that acreage that meets the threshold of, of us recommending to spray. Um, we will provide a contact for a preferred vendor that we use, and then the municipalities will go through, you know, whatever their own um, bidding and payment process is, uh, and then they can submit you know, their proposals to us in order to be able to access the dollars that we've set aside. And according to the resolution, that was uh, up to a maximum of $30,000 um, to help uh, offset the cost of the spray. Any any discussion? Okay, oh, sorry, Commissioner oh. Spizzi, you still. I just said, Jennifer, how quickly can we get a contract in place? Do you guys have a boilerplate? And I'm assuming we'd have to run it by the um, core council yeah. for approval to get so, that moving. So I've already provided uh, Mike Keyes with a boilerplate contract, and I think that he has already run it past Corp Council, and so maybe it's there. Um, I, you know, I can make whatever time we need in order to get get that process, uh, you know, sped up. We can do that once once it's finished with whatever changes and things need to happen on the Oakland County end. It's probably about a two and a half to three week uh, uh, process for MSU internally to get that signed and executed. Um, I, we're doing the work right now. Uh, we're good faith okay. partners. And so, you know, I just want to reassure everyone of that. We're already into this. And so I don't want that to be, you know, anything that would, would feel, I, w I don't want anyone to feel like that's something that would slow the work down. Okay, great. Thank you. 
So, Mr. Chair, I think the next steps we need to set a subcommittee and finalize the process for the, for the municipalities to submit for such a grant. Correct. Um, any public comment? Let's see, Commissioner Wiper has one. Well, I'm not public I mean, comment. I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> any any comment on this? I apologize. Yeah. Public comments next. So, do we foresee this as a kind of a reimbursable grant, similar similar to some of the other programs we've done? And I, I'm sorry. I'm a heavy equipment operator. I can't hear you. I apologize. <laughs> I mean, this is going to be a reimbursable grant for the for all our CVTs to to apply, kind of like our other pilot Correct, programs. Correct. Yeah. Right. And, and have any other um, counties uh, done this reimbursable grant that the MSU knows about and has worked? Or uh, so we've had a gypsy moth suppression program in Macomb County for yeah. about the last 30 years. Um, in some cases, some Oakland County communities that border Macomb have even participated. Uh, Macomb County used to do a cost share with their municipalities, but they do not currently. Um, but it was very successful in the past. Um, so yeah, I, you know, it's. I, I think it's very successful. I believe at this point in time, Macomb County is the only county that we are working with that does an active spray aerial spray program. Okay. Nothing, nothing's going to slow this down. We, <coughs> our timing's going to be. Do you think it's okay? I think so. I mean, we're, we're like I said, we're engaged in the work. Um, you know, everything else is kind of a matter of paperwork. Even establishing the parameters for the submission of the proposals, um, we have you know research that lets us know like what the thresholds need to be based on the survey data that's done. So, as municipalities you know submit to us, well, we saw this many um, egg masses per so many meters, um, we can say, well, that meets the level of, of needing to be sprayed. Um, and then the members of the, the proposed subcommittee can can give it their stamp of approval. And, and just and a lot of these tracts of land are going to be multiple CVTs. Are we encouraging the CVTs to work together? Um, or edu educate them in such a way that, you know, uh, Milford Township works with Lyon Township since it's a lot uh, of vacant land? Or? No, that hasn't necessarily been the approach. We've we've been uh, reaching out to and educating CVTs individually. So, you know, they've sent uh, representatives to our, our training workshops to learn to survey. That happened altogether, but in terms of sort of the financial approach, um, we, we haven't considered that. So that might be something that, that the subcommittee can consider, and we'd be happy to communicate that. Okay, thank you. All right, next is Commissioner Charles. After that, Commissioner Markham. Actually, uh, Mr. Wipert asked my question. Thank oh, you. Oh, okay. Commissioner Markham. Thank you. Um, do you have a, uh, this is for Mr. Scott, do you have an, uh, an assessment of which communities are affected by this? Oakland County is a big place. Um, yeah, so primarily the response that we've gotten thus far um, has come from communities further to the north. Um, but I, I apologize, I don't have the list of the respondents from the workshops with me, but uh, there's about 25 communities that have responded so far um, and who attended training, uh, and they're, they're primarily in the northern part of the county. Um, that does not mean that gypsy moth is not present elsewhere, right. um, but it, you know, it means perhaps it hasn't risen to the level of, of people complaining and wanting to take action about it. Okay, my other question is related to the report that says um, it's, it's going to reduce it, say, 60%, but there should be an ongoing program to monitor and continue to spray if necessary. So this funding, is this just for this year? And then if that happens, we'll come back for more funding next year? Is that what you're looking at? Yeah, so uh, this funding was set aside from, I, I believe, a special projects fund um, that, that right. exists. I'm not familiar with all the inner workings. Right. But it is for this one year. Um, like, we, like you just said, this is a suppression program, not an elimination. Uh, that's virtually impossible. So I can tell you from past experience what we've seen is that what typically tends to happen is acreage that has been sprayed does not see a recurrence of major issues from gypsy moth. But we might see uh, a gypsy moth explosion in acreage right next to it that was not sprayed in the previous year, right? So um, it makes sense, I think, from a practical standpoint. 
um, to consider this a multi-year effort. So at the end of this effort, you know, we'll prepare a report we'll, that'll include lists of all the communities that chose to engage in the spray program, all the different steps we took, and I think um, you know, the, the board can evaluate that report and decide whether or not it was a worthwhile investment, you know, based on kind of what's, what's going on with um, gypsy moth complaints in other communities. And if the board sees fit um, to dedicate funding in further years, we'll be happy to work with them. Okay, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is being funded out of our board of commissioners mm -hmm. uh, special projects. Yeah. So if we were gonna look at it being a long-term thing, it should fit more into someplace else in the budget as a regular item. But for this year to get it started and yeah. to see how it works, I think that's a good use of our special projects funding. I, I will share with you that the practice in Macomb County for several years, so the, the gypsy moth has a life cycle. They typically show up about every years, er, excuse me, every eight years, uh, eight to 10 years and become a problem. Um, but then there's some, some years of relative quiet in between. Uh, what we tried to do in Macomb County was every year when we did not have a gypsy moth issue, um, the county set aside you know, about $25,000 or so into an account that just sat just for when they, when they reemerged. Um, and so then okay. when they show up again, you know, the county has resources to be able to deal with it. Okay, thank you. That's all I had, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. right. Any other discussion from commissioners? So in my prior life, I was an um, exterminator for Terminex, right? So not promoting them or anything, but it reminds me of when I was in the city of Detroit, right? You'd, you'd have an extermination on one house and all the cockroaches would go to the next yeah, house, the next right? House. And then they'd come back when everything was clean, right? <laughs> you, literally, you could see them crawling over the fence. It's yeah. crazy. Oh, so that reminds me when you said the next one, it was like flashbacks. Uh, yeah. um, I do appreciate this. and. Uh, that's the only question I have. Uh, if there's any, if there's no other discussion, we'll take the vote. Uh, Trump. What are we voting? Well, it was informational. Oh, but. well, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is for informational. I actually, so I'm setting up a subcommittee, like Commis uh, Commissioner Spiz said, and the subcommittee is going to going to have Commissioner Marcia Gershenson and Commissioner Spiz as co-chairs, not chair vice chair. They're both going to be co-chairs. I don't feel like we need more than two commissioners on this. I feel like. They're the ones that have uh, led this initiative and they'll report back to this committee and we'll report back to the board. So. Chairman Miller, would it be possible to structure a study group instead of a subcommittee? There is a little more flexibility. Um, just wanted to offer that to you. Well, I believe we have to set up a subcommittee on this. And uh, I go ahead, Commissioner Spiz. Just, just a quick question. Um, and maybe kind of you can help answer this. How did we do the um, bi-party road improvement program or the drinking fountain program? How did we do that? Mike Andrews, can you comment? I wasn't it's involved so, with that. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we did set up subcommittees for that commissioner. Um, okay. With the other one, from what I'm reading through the resolution that was prior approved is that uh, the oversight or the, uh, would come from the standing committee on this, but it's totally up to uh, the committee members and the chair on how they want to um, set up any kind of additional oversight committees. Appreciate that. Yeah, I would I would stick with uh, the subcommittee and, and then I would rely on Commissioner Spidge and Commissioner Gersherson to set the, when they're going to meet and what they're going to uh, talk about and then they can report back to us as the, the board or the committee. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. I'm, okay. All right, and then uh, I think that's, yeah, we don't have to vote or anything, so that's, appreciate you coming. And uh, if there's no other discussion on that, now we're to our public comments. Well, I would like to get together with you, actually, and find out so, what we're using, because I know I'm- Wait to see if there's anybody. Hey, they miss it, they miss it. What's that? They miss it, they miss it. Right, right. So looking for public comment, anybody who wants to speak for public comment, come up, please. Yes. I apologize, Commissioner Wiper. I have horrible hearing on the yeah, side yeah, of my okay. head. Yeah. Good morning. We'll start the. Good morning. Talk. Catherine Kennedy from Lake Orion. I do have a couple of follow up questions on the solar panels. I thought I heard 
that the life expectancy would be 20 to 25 years with an ROI of 22 years. Now, if I heard that correctly, that's return on investment. So it would say that it takes 22 years to pay for itself. So I think that's what I heard. <laughs> uh, second thing, do the panels come from China? Most solar panels actually do come from China. And I'm assuming when they say no form of battery backup system, it'll just operate when it doesn't, and uh, when it does, and when it doesn't, there has to be the other system to kick in to take over whatever energy needs there are. Um, one thing that does concern me at a national level is the green energy initiatives haven't addressed that batteries are one of the least recyclable things in the globe. What are we sticking in everything but batteries? And 60% of the minerals necessary to build that technology is owned by China. So the other thing is another country that had a lot of the rare earth minerals at their disposal that unfortunately could have been used for very positive use for the Afghan people because Afghanistan also has a lot of the rare earth minerals necessary to build the technologies that are part that's being uh, imposed realistically everywhere. We don't control those minerals. The fact that the cobalt mine in the Congo was just sold to China, it was an American firm. I don't know how that got finagled. I'm hearing it was through Biden family deals. But that's another very serious issue. And I would remind people that rare earth minerals, the few that we have here, are buried under our pristine Upper Peninsula. So I don't think we want to torch the entire northern mist Midwest and dig it up to get the kind of materials like copper and other uh, minerals that might be available in our venues. And I'm very distraught by the fact that they've failed to recognize the oil and gas industry is actually most efficiently done in America. We exceeded the carbon reductions of every country that was in the Paris Accord while we were not in the Paris Accord through innovation. That is the key. And the fact that they're ignoring the technologies that already exist and are Thank used in other areas <coughs> to reuse the methane and create an entirely new source of energy without wasting, where we're not relying on our enemies, that is the key thing that needs to be dis uh, discussed, and I haven't heard it discussed at all. Thank I'm you. very concerned that we're giving up our entire national security in favor of energy that we don't, not only don't control, that our enemies control. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. <clears throat> Next public comment. Anybody else up for public comment? I'm Sandra Carlin, still from Novi. Um, I, I do want to say that um, I met Catherine here at one of the meetings, and I've gotten to know her a little bit. She lives on the other side of town, so we don't have a lot of time together except a few minutes before the meetings. But I highly respect her intelligence, her devotion to research and information about all of these topics that you guys are making decisions about. And because we're not working full time, we have time to do that. So I would plead for you to really listen and have the whole board of commissioners begin to listen to the community members who are studying these things. Um, the spray that was discussed today is a naturally occurring bacteria from the soil. I'm not a soil research scientist, but I do know that tetanus comes out of the soil, and it is a big problem. There could be other bacteria that we might not be aware of that are being sprayed into our communities that could cause dangers. Uh, the presenter said it was safe. I think he said plants and animals. I didn't hear him say children and adult human beings. I do remember Agent Orange in Vietnam that was thought to be safe. And um, my husband's cousin died 
um, just a couple of months ago, decades after service there, and only now are the long-term causes of human be uh, beings' disease even being acknowledged. So um, we, we have um, public parks and, parks and facilities at Wald Lake, where I live, um, in Novi, concerning, and my concern is overspray and effects on the lakes and streams because we already have some weed control things that are going in, and the, the combination of these bacteria with other chemicals. Um, you know, that's why your physician looks at the drugs that you're currently taking and compares them with the ones that he's giving you to make sure that there's no interactions. And I want to be sure that that's done. Um, I would like, um, I think, informed consent of private property owners should be mandatory. I believe we need an equal number of citizens on this committee or study group um, to look at these issues, and I think that you would be really, really val um, benefit from that. And I'd also like to ask that the microphones for the offsite presenters um, have a have a look at them because some of them were very clear. Others had echo and feedback and made it very difficult for me. I couldn't even understand what they were saying. And so um, if you could let know, Erin's was the worst. And so since she's new, maybe she's unaware of the feedback that's being caused by other electronic devices in the room or something. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else for public comment? Heather Hello. Smiley from Lake Orion. Um, actually, I'd like to volunteer for the Gypsy Club. Um, I've been dealing with them for 30 years up north uh, here on National Park. I mean, I've been burning them off the trees forever. I do it as a free position. Um, I did get a chance to speak. I know I call them Gypsy Club, but that's what we've been calling it. I did speak with the gentleman. It is residential only, so I do understand what you're saying. Um, but we wrap up north, too. They have re they've tried the sprays. It doesn't really work. Um, it, they say it doesn't hurt the butterflies, but I haven't seen some types of butterflies for years at the cottage. So I would probably get together some people like me too that would definitely go out and wrap trees, man hours and things. Because while maybe it won't get the 60% mark, it does do, I mean, I've seen it do great deals for our property for the last couple of years. Just wrap it on and tear them down, wrap, you know, it's a little bit of work, but summertime, it's pretty, you go for a walk, you wrap a tree. I mean, you know. It, I think it would be something that we could get the public to even help, especially um, if people aren't necessarily wanting to fly over. I garden at my home. While, again, they say that it is uh, free of any kind of chemicals, I don't know how it's going to affect my, leg my lettuce, my tomatoes, you know, and I eat that. My family eats that. So uh, I'd like to do some investigations. I'd like to try to help out. We're kind of nerd. We like to get on your, you know, bad side a lot, but we'd like to help, too. Uh, so this is definitely something that we seek interest in. So, again, I mean, I'd be happy to volunteer or do any research or, you know, chit-chat with Edward a little bit, too, and see what they got, because he's not necessarily the scientist person. He's just the presenter. Because, um, again, I've got many years of experience of fighting these guys uh, successfully. Um, another thing that I wanted to kind of just discuss is the mask mandates. We overturned Michigan school boards yesterday uh, through oh, about a 1,000 of our volunteers that we collected. So we are definitely a mass to um, be fighting up against. So I was just wondering when you're going to let your sheriffs uh, take the mask off, because they don't want to do that. Obviously, they only do it because they're told to. Um, but it's already been deemed pretty much useless and illegal as far as that. So, you know, breathe, guys. It's free country. Have a great day. Explain what you mean by wrath, because I don't think most people oh. understand. I know what you mean. Yeah, exactly. so you literally take, like, burlap and something and wrap it, and then they can't they're not that smart, so they can't crawl up. So then they kind of either die or they get stuck or they go back down. So then they can't eat the leaves because that's all they're after is the leaves for nutrition. So you'll notice a lot of they like oak trees. Um, you know, it just looks like the leaves haven't come to bloom. It's just them eating it. So yeah, you can wrap the trees. A little leg work, but there's so many people, especially Oakland County, we're all nature, we're runners, you know, people are taking walks in the uh, two seconds. Wrap it, throw in a little local garbage. It could be, I think, saving money and like a, I think the community would totally be interested in trying to do this. Um, personal two cents, I'll look into my community and see because we are northern, Lake Orion and Oxford and stuff, so we're the ones that are affected um, more so than maybe some of the cities that don't have the variety of food that they like. I think it's just based on what kind of food they like, like your cockroach thing, I'm a Detroit native, yeah. So, you know, they don't find the food, they got to go to where the food is. Same with birds, deer, everything. We're tearing down all their nature. And that's another meeting though. But I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else from public comment? Anybody else from public comment? Seeing none, we'll call public comment close at this time. 
Now we have other business. Anybody that has other business? Commissioner Cavell. Cool. I, um, if I could hand these out to everybody. If you, yeah. If you'll indulge me. I saw this at a city council meeting I went to in the district, and I went, oh, this is cool. Let's see what happened. Um, so there's two concepts that um, I've talked with some of us about that um, just to get the conversation oh, started. I thought you said everybody. You're not a commissioner, so I'm talking to them first. This is just for information. He's just bringing up an idea that he has. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And you're going to be here and hear about it. So the thought is, there's two ideas. And again, this is just for starting the conversation and getting feedback from everybody. Um, so first is a, I called it a CVT match fund. So thinking about our ARPA money and how we can support our local governments. Um, so that's the first one. And then the second one is, it was called the Family Resiliency Fund, but having conversations with other folks uh, mentioned uh, a better idea of calling it is like middle class stabilization emergency grants or something like that. So I don't know if y'all want to just kind of give it a quick scan or want me to give you kind of the two big bullet points of the concept. And again, this is just for talking, and I want to make edits on this, so tell yeah. me what you think. I would give the, the what your concept is, and then give the commissioners an opportunity to read it. Okay. They can always connect, so, you, connect with you afterwards. Thank you, yeah. So the first idea of the CVT match, right? CVT, City, Village, Township. So how can we work with cities that say, for example, uh, a city wants to buy a new ambulance, and that is ARPA qualified for the city to pay for but that city didn't get that much in ARPA money and their budget is limited. So we, as the county, could chip in a match. So say you're a city that has a 5% poverty rate. We could say your ambulance that costs $200,000, we'll give you a dollar for dollar match. But if your city has a 25% poverty rate, we'll give you a four to one match or a three to one match. So that then that ambulance costs the city less and then the county is able to support that city in a more substantive way. And then they're able, the, the local community is able to spend that, the money that they do have left for other super important infrastructure or community development projects. So that's, that's the basic concept of the CVT match fund. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, are the commissioners for Commissioner Cabell right off the bat? Or you don't have to, I just throw it out there. The other thing I would say is if bring up the ambulance thing is, uh, would the county have the ability to make sure that they're buying like a, a good ambulance? The ambulances we're using an example, right? So they're not just sure. buying some like knockoff or okay. you know some used ambulance that they're trying to refurbish or you know something that tangible. So we're making sure the money's spent correctly, and they're going to get some longevity out of it. Okay. Um, that would just be a question for me, right? Good call. Um, okay. Of course, I would say uh, you know American made, but that's. Sure. You know, I don't know if we can impose that on the, on the communities. I'm not sure that would have to go to court counsel. Okay. So like quality assurance. Correct. Okay. I like okay. how you sum that up. <laughs> yeah. that, uh, Comm Commissioner Markner has a question. So um, I have a couple of thoughts on this. First of all, yes, we have a big pot of ARPA dollars. But if you talk to the executive and his staff and you talk to our leadership, we can all figure out how to spend that $246 million, sure. right? Um, and as we just started to walk through that, we find these big buckets, right? 40 million here, 60 million here, generally where we want to see funding go to, and it's got to meet the requirements of ARPA, which are really quite restrictive, okay? So that all being said, I think the idea of matching communities uh, with what they want to do that meets the ARPA requirements is 100% <clears throat> in line with what ARPA says. They want us to coordinate with communities so that we are leveraging the dollars. The idea of doing that, I think, is correct. Um, I think where we're gonna get hung up is uh, priorities. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. What do we at the county think is the most important things to spend our ARPA dollars on may not be what the CVTs need. Okay. And I don't, you know, I want to caution against, I like your, your ambulance example. Yeah. 
Because yeah. maybe community XYZ wants to spend $200,000 on a brand new ambulance, but community you know, L over here just wants $50,000 to right. improve a park in an underserved area. So I think those discussions and priority setting okay. across the board needs to be in place before we could do something like this. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of questions that need to be answered. So, For sure. well, yeah, and that's the hope of just doing yes. this, is right. Right. So, CVT priorities, totally understand. And you're saying, Commissioner Markham, that then it's like, uh, does the county want to be spending two hundred thousand dollars on ambulances, or on one ambulance on, in that right. community compared right. to something else over okay. in this one? So, I think the way we run our road programs is a good one, right? Okay. We let the local. <laughs> community tell us what it is they want, uh, and then we match that. Okay. And, and I think this could be that kind of a program with a lot of rules sure. and guideposts along the way. Okay, so the local community like dictates, okay. Even like a rubric mm -hmm. or something. Commissioner Spitz, do you have any comment there? I was just checking. Okay. Cool, so this is- No, not yet. Charlie and I talk offline about this. Perfect, thank you. So this is CVT match. Thank yeah. you for this input, this is helpful. Um, and then the other one, the, the second one, uh, the class stabilization. So this is a concept, so when I was in grad school at U of M, uh, they have a thing called the Center for the Education of Women. And that was started back in the 60s because when women were going to U of M back then, there might be emergencies, like you have to get home because a family member's sick, or there's a holiday break from school, but you're not able to bridge the gap in your rent because you were working a work study job or something. So this, the, this concept is based very much on the Center for the Education of Women, which offers emergency grants to the students at U of M with, you know, there's a form that you gotta fill out. You gotta have like a justifiable need. And I think you gotta give like a copy of your bank statement to prove that you really don't have the money. There's some sort of friction point that says you can't just give free money, but then, uh, they'll give you the grant in a quick turnaround because again, it's an emergency grant. And so thinking about that, plus combining the concept of what y'all did in the last term before I showed up of the $2,500 for veterans for emergency needs, kind of putting those two together and saying, and then realizing that in America, a third of people cannot, a third of households cannot fill a $2,000 emergency within 30 days without going to like a payday lender or getting some other form of help. So this is to hopefully help stabilize middle class families so that people that are in the middle class don't slide into being lower middle class or lower middle class into poverty. And that's why the thinking is 30 to 150% AMI as the qualifier. So if you need $2,000 to bridge an emergency, we'll be able to help you quickly like we did with the veterans and like U of M does with its Center for Education of Women. And then and 30 to 150% AMI, that population for a family of four, that means you're making between $25,000 and $110,000. So again, it's supposed to be middle class. Um, so yeah, we'll give you two grand if you need it or up to $2,000 if you need it for an emergency. And then the second thing is, in order to prevent an emergency from happening again, offer you the opportunity to create your own savings account or bolster your savings account with another grant if you apply for it. So what do y'all? Uh, Commissioner Markham? So I um, don't think we're the right committee to talk about this. Okay, yeah, I left that part blank because I didn't know where it should yeah, go. Yeah, I really I feel like this is a discussion for public health and safety because okay. we do have and have had these kinds of things, and not exactly this, sure. but certainly, you know, let's help somebody who really needs it in an acute way. Yeah. Um, I mean, so I would want this to be structured, and I'm not on that committee, I never sure. have been, but I would want it to be structured in consistent with other programs that we've done like this in the past, and that's really all the comment I would have. Well, okay. I would say I would say it should go through both committees because it is economic development, right? Thank you. Not yeah, really. Okay. So, because you're trying to make sure people have, you know, the quality of life, right? So that's you're Good developing point. that, making sure they're working. Commissioner Spitz, you have a comment. I was going to say I agree with Gwen. I mean, this is probably not the, the best forum for it, and we do have other. How do I put it? Other programs similar to this, not exactly this, that do this. Like for I know we do it for housing and for rental assistance and et cetera, et cetera. So maybe if we can 
put it within the groups that look at that one now. They can come up with something and help Charlie. I think group get where Charlie's trying to go with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank Any you. other discussion? Yeah. Wiper. No. All right. Okay. Well, uh, I appreciate the time. So yeah, just so I want to ask you, it's, it's up to you. Do you. Would you like to receive and file this and put it in today, or you just want to wait to work on it more? I think I should work on it more. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the notes. All right. Thank Sounds you. good. Any other business? Any other business? Hearing none, we'll call the meeting adjourn at 10.45 and 30 seconds.